नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग वेर एवर यू आर वेलकम टू वायु विवेकानंद योगा यूनिवर्सिटी डिस्टिंग विद स्पीकर सीरीज वेबिनार सो वी आर डिलाइटेड हियर टू हैव डॉक्टर निक श्रॉफ डिस्टिंग विद स्पीकर टूडे डॉक्टर निक श्रॉफ हुज प्रोफेसर ऑफ रिसर्च एंड टीचिंग फैकल्टी एट वायु ही इज अ यूरोलॉजिस्ट अ कैंसर सर्जन योगा अलायंस टीचर एंड हेल्थ केयर कंसल्टेंट Uh, he has practiced conventional western medicine for four decades uh, integrating his skills with modern holistic therapy uh, his technical skills and compassion have guided him to facilitate healing at a deeper level um, he uh, is a president of american prostate cancer foundation he stand out as a social innovator utilizing his education experience and leadership skills especially for the elderly and un, uh, underserved populations in low socio economic communities he has a lot of accolades but uh, you know his full uh, bio is uh, on our website as well and today's topic is relaxation breathing for enhanced sleep you know this topic is near and dear to all of us um, of course so um, uh, what he'll be mentioning about of course sleep is pivotal to our cognitive function metabolic regulation and overall health uh, embracing mindful breathing and relaxation techniques improve sleep quality health and well-being the convergence of ancient yogic traditions and contemporary scientific research underscores the effectiveness of nasal abdominal breathing as opposed to shallow chest breathing so the session highlights the transformative power of diaphragmatic breathing exploring various pranayama techniques our practical demonstration showcases their usefulness for physical emotion mental well being so without further ado uh, dr shah uh, floor is yours again it's honor to have you uh, here thank you Thank you, Prasanji. That's a very good introduction. So I'm going to start at the very beginning. Uh, let me get to the slides. Okay. So first, I'd like you to go ahead and breathe in through your nose, and we're going to chant the Om only one time. Okay. So close your eyes and feel the vibrations resonate from the base of your spine all the way to the crown. Okay. Um, I wanted you to absorb the sensation in your body and go inwards and then be aware of the stillness. So this is a very simple technique. We'll talk about a lot of other techniques in just a minute. Okay. So basically like prasanji explained um we're going to talk today about relaxation breathing okay so namaste hello and welcome right so okay so i'm going to talk to you a little bit about sleep optimization and how to unlock your re for restorative sleep how do you do that you know and this is the way we are going to integrate eastern insight with modern medicine okay there are a lot of little techniques that i want to share with you and there are hundreds of pranayam and breathing techniques and there are hundreds of asanas and yoga postures and all that one can do but which ones to do when and how to do them appropriately and in a correct manner is what is the crux of the matter right okay so breathing is so natural everybody breathes right and even when you sleep you breathe you don't have to tell yourself hey breathe breathe nothing like that but besides being on involuntary control there is some voluntary control also and this is what it's pranayam okay so i'm going to just walk you through some simple things and i'm telling you this because you make some small changes in your breathing and this is going to be transformative and this goes a long way to improve your health and well being right so the key is to cultivate beautiful flowers and that is positive thoughts so besides that you need to uproot the weeds which are the negative thoughts otherwise they strangle the garden's beauty and what i'd like you to think about is that you need to unwind during the day i mean there is so much of information overload and you're working and doing all kinds of things but you need to promote rest and using a quiet time this is called quiet time innovation 
and neuroscience is now talked about this. So our ancient Rishi Munis, they had an experiential knowledge. They knew that certain things worked and they talked about it. But now with the validation of modern medicine, modern science, we can know what to do when, and that is the most important thing. And that is what is called Sukha Pranayam. Sukha means happiness, right? So it's a simple technique. It's a yogic technique. And you need to consciously regulate your inhalation and exhalation and the gap between the two, which is called the kumbhak. We'll talk about a little bit about this. Now, this is not only in India, but, you know, a lot of other Eastern countries. That's why we said, you know, we need to talk about Eastern insight. So the Buddhist people called, called this thing about Zazen. And so we'll talk a little bit about this and how you use guided imagery with all of this. So let's dive into the techniques to reduce stress. So we're going to focus mostly on yoga, which includes the breathing and all of that, the awareness of the breath, the mindfulness and the meditation. And then how do you do progressive muscle relaxation? So you need to kind of do some good muscle relaxation. And sometimes we need to do this thing where you contract, contract, contract your thing and then relax completely. So that you can feel the difference between the two and that relaxation you need from each part of your body. And one of the ways that we do this is with slow, deep, deep meaning, deep end of the diaphragm, deep end of the swimming pool, that down here, it's called an abdominal breath. So for purposes of today, you know, all the breathing, that is anivarya, that means no matter what, you're breathing in through the nose and you're, it's an abdominal breath. So with each breath, and I'll show you some pretty pictures on the line to kind of hone in this part, okay? So the whole purpose of this is to deactivate the sympathetic nervous system and then upregulate your parasympathetic nervous system. And 80% of the parasympathetic nervous system is the vagus nerve. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how to improve the tone of your vagus nerve, all right? Okay. So let's go here. So the key is, this is a beautiful picture and I'm talking about this because this is talking about the diaphragmatic breath, okay? So you inhale and the diaphragm goes down, but the abdomen goes up, it inflates. And then you exhale and it's a slow, quiet, rhythmic breathing. Only then you can increase your vagal tone, yeah? Now, so the diaphragm movement increases the circulation and the lymphatic flow and all of that. And then it improves your core muscle stability, increases your physical, mental, and spiritual health. And we want to do this for relaxation breathing before you sleep. So we need to unwind. And then for that, I'm going to show you some breathing techniques and also some yoga postures and things like that, which will only help you to relax. All right. Okay. So let's dive into this. So the first thing is you can do this sitting, standing, or lying down. Okay. We do this when we teach even little children and we, tell, we put a teddy, teddy bear on their abdomen and we tell them, see the teddy bear go up and the teddy bear come down. So that is how they do the abdominal breathing. And the key is, you know, there's a gentle reminder here that you're breathing in through the nose. Okay. So by inhaling, your belly expands and by exhaling, your diaphragm and lung relax, pushing the air out. So we are, the whole process today is to use your breath to untie the knots in your body and your mind. And we need to do this, especially before bedtime, okay? And so it's a process and I want to kind of show you how you can do this to decrease your inflammation, decrease your cytokine storms, decrease all of that and help this. So one of the things that we do is called the relaxation response because that increases the vagal tone. So here again, we are going to 
I'll give you a gentle reminder to do the nose and it's an abdominal breath. So you, you want to inhale the calmness, peace and ease and then release the stress and tension. So there are many ways to do this and I will walk you through some of these things because this is physiological and how to do this in the correct way. Okay. Now, we talked about this. Now remember, the, there's between meditation and medication, there's only one word. The T is important here, meditation. The T is transformative, right? So we're going to talk about all that and just it's a meditative state. It's not a big deal about going uh, to the forest and doing meditation and uh, sitting in that position for a long time. You can do this so many ways. Right? I do walking meditation, standing meditation, lying down meditation also. So if you just cannot sit in that uh, yoga pose, don't worry. That does not preclude you from doing meditation. The main thing is you want to de-stress. Decrease the anxiety, decrease your anger, jealousy, whatever you have, and only then you can get good sleep. And with that, you will decrease, you, because you're increasing your parasympathetic tone, you're going to decrease your blood pressure, decrease your respiratory rate, decrease your serum cortisol, adrenaline, noradrenaline. Now, noradrenaline and adrenaline are also called epinephrine and norepinephrine, but that's, you know, just to know these words are important because that will kind of help you to do this properly. So once you do this relaxation response, how do you get this relaxation? How do you increase your vagal tone? And one way to unwind is doing some simple yoga poses. So one of the things that we do is you can sit in the chair, okay? So if you cannot do it standing, you can do it sitting, and this is called a sitting konasan. So what we are trying to do is if you can do this with me uh, in the comfort of your home, you're going to just raise your right hand and breathe in, okay? And then breathe out. Breathe out, 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 breathe out all the way down, okay? And then gently breathe in, okay? With mindfulness, go ahead and raise your left hand all the way, all the way, all the way, and then breathe out. So we're just doing some simple things. This is this is one of the simplest things you can do to improve your balance, flexibility, joint mobility, all of that. But more importantly, before sleep, you want to do this with mindfulness. So you got once you do this on the right side and the left side, you need to feel the difference between the right and left side. Okay, this decreases the stiffness. See, whole day you are sitting in the chair. And they say the sitting is the new smoking. So you want to do this to unwind. And this is one way to do this, to improve your vagal tone. And you can have fun doing it. You can have the John Travolta pose, or you can do some tight stretching like this in the chair. Anything that will stretch is important. So this is what, something that we do this all the time. And you can also decrease your shoulders because shoulders are tight for most people. So all you need to do is to bring this and so that the elbow points to the ceiling and then you go up and then you breathe out like this. See? So these are called shoulder socket rotation. These are simple warm-up exercises that help you to relax your shoulders. Okay. So because there is tightness, more, for most people there is tightness in the jaws and in the neck and in the shoulder. Because whole day you're sitting like this. So some of the, the important thing is you need to be like this. So this is why I tell people to do this. Now, if you're sitting the whole day, driving long distances, you can go out like this. You don't need necessarily to come down because whole day you're like this. So you need to open up. That is important. You know, then only you can breathe properly. Okay. All right. Now, the other thing is, this is called the cow face, right? So all we're doing is to go up like this. And this is also because whole day you're, you're slouched. So you need to go like this and then go ahead and pull this thing up. So like this, see? Okay, and all your four fingers are locked in. 
and enjoy this position for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever. But don't be stressed. You know, if you cannot do it completely, you can use a towel between the two or just touch your hand and gradually you should be able to do this. So the main thing is that this is such an important thing that people need to do. And that's the reason your shoulder will relax, your neck will relax, and your spine is erect. Head is straight and smile, okay? So at the end of this, you've got to smile. There are other simple um, extension poses. Now, I don't do all of these every day. I do only some of them. You can select whatever. So the days that I swim a lot or I've been uh, playing racquetball or whatever else, then I do less of these. But some days, you know, we don't do that much. And then therefore I do that. So that you can also do this. You can mix and match whatever you want to do. But these are relaxation poses. So um, in the night, um, before sleeping, two, three hours before sleeping, I don't do Surya Namaskar, you know, those sun salutation poses. And I don't do something heavy. And the same way I don't do uh, breathing exercises like Kapalvati, which is, you know, a little bit more energetic or Agnisar or some bandhas. Those things I do in the morning, that's okay, you know, because that energizes you. So that should be done in the morning. But these kind of simple exercises, uh, stretching can be done in the night. So there are a whole, whole bunch of things like this. You can do this uh, side bend. Because, and also while you're doing these side bends, you need to feel the length on the side of the body from all the way from the heel to the fingerprint. And that will bring feelings of spaciousness and levity. Yeah, so this is what can help you. Do that. I'm just showing you the simple pictures. This is just a split. So you can use props. The other thing that I want to show you, the main reason I'm showing you this, is you can use small props. And once you're warmed up, you won't even need the problems. You should be able to split completely. So this is called an extended split feet or Anjanaya Asana, Hanuman Asana. So when, when you're doing this, you need to be mindful. So think about activating your hamstrings, your adductor muscles, your front leg, and your back leg activates your hip muscles. So whole day you're, when you're sitting, the hip flexors are not activated. So some of these exercises will activate your thing. This is just a simple lunge. You can do all kinds of things, okay? And then you can do some balancing pose. See, the whole life is balance. You know, balancing work life, work life balance, home life balance, whatever you want to do, and uh, balancing the right and left hemispheres of your brain, everything is balancing, you know. And so this is also a balance. This is called reverse balance top. So once once you are in this position, so this is called a tabletop, you know. And gradually you need to do this so that you can put a cup of hot coffee also on your belly. I mean, just that's what the yoga teachers always tell you. But remember this, that once you do this, then raise your one leg and then raise your hand also. But you need to do this gradually. I'm not telling you to do this right away because I don't want you to fall. But this is a simple thing to do. And most people should be able to do this. Okay? Uh, unless they have some kind of problem. But, you know, but through effort, you can do this. Now, the king of asanas is the headstand, okay? This is called sisashma. And I do this before dinner, okay? So just to unwind, because I want to reverse the direction of gravity. So if there is some pedal edema or some edema in your lower legs, whole day you're standing, sitting, whatever, that will decrease. And it reverse direction of gravity, it increases your disc space. So you lengthen your spine. I have a yoga trapeze in my home and I can do this and let your hang, the spine hang loose, lengthen your spine. I'm only showing this because this way you can do these things quite easily or you can use a prop. I generally do not teach or use this third one because there you're putting your neck and there might be some strain on your neck. So you want to elongate your spine, the suspension training or whichever way you do it, but this is important. Or you can do a handstand. 
it completely all right you know elbow stand handstand there are so many functional ways to do this but i want to impress you this is the king of asanas but people are not doing it because for whatever reason they've been told wrongly or just saying but there are some contraindications for example just like anything else one of the things i want to tell you is that if somebody has uncompensated hypertension you know blood pressure is too high or they have uncompensated heart problems lung problems or glaucoma if you have glaucoma that is the increase of intraocular pressure that means the pressure in your eyeball is too much then you should not do these things so just like anything else these are simple things but this you need to do before meals okay i generally do i do this every day but i do it you know before dinner and then can talk about unwinding in various ways so conscious breathing will help you conscious breathing while letting your neck and the spine loose it is loose that is the key the key word is that and this kind of a prop is again important so more and more people in yoga are using props and pilates and things like that to kind of help them with yoga poses what our rishi muni were doing anyway okay so then you want to relax so one way to relax is coming into this child pose it's called balasana sishvasana and all so this is a calming and grounding pose it decreases tension now when you are doing this you need to smile because if you smile there is no tension okay and it decreases the tension in your back and your hips it relaxes your mind and body and it soothes your nervous system now remember the body needs movement the mind needs stillness and the only thing in between is the breath and the breath what it will do is it will soothe your nervous system so soothing the nervous system is paramount to reduce problems uh, that you have during the day or anxiety or stress or whatever and you need to prolong your exhalation so this is called first lip breathing it's also called straw breathing you know so first lip breathing is you inhale and it's just a small inhalation like you're smelling a flower okay and then you breathe out so when you breathe out it should be double your inhalation at least double your inhalation so people who have shortness of breath okay they also benefit tremendously with this during covid um, i'd gone to a hospital to see a friend of a doctor friend of mine who who was having difficulty in breathing so i taught him this first lip breathing that helped a little bit then i told him to do this child pose because see about 80% of your lung is in the back and in the lower part so when you do this pose it kind of helps you to breathe better so that decreases the shortness of breath and it in, increases the gas exchange it expands your alveoli now remember there are 300 air sacs the alveoli on each lung okay so many of them are collapsed and some of them are in the lower part in the back of your lung so you want to keep the airways open so that this will open it and this will also reduce your shortness of breath so this is the key that you want to do and this is a very simple for child pose balasana and all that and you do with this you do first lip breathing this is where yoga meets modern science because people know the importance of first lip breathing straw breathing is also called okay so this is based on numerous um publications in the international yoga journal and all places so we are not talking about just some um, empirical thing that our rishi munis did but they had experiential knowledge but we are talking about this the positive effects of yoga and meditation on sleep based on modern day medicine okay so there are numerous studies i mean i'm just giving you some idea here that this is uh, how it improves sleep quality so we need to kind of use some of these to increase your own sleep and for some people something is better for somebody else some you need to have a buffet menu 
And then you choose what you want. You want muscle relaxation, or you want abdominal breathing, or you need how to improve the sleep hygiene. All of these things are important, okay? And I mean, there are numerous, numerous papers about this, but what I wanted to show you is that there is a personalized relaxation intervention. So you want to minimize the sympathetic nervous system, you know, decrease the, down-regulate your sympathetic activity and up-regulate your parasympathetic activity. This is how you maximize autonomic relaxation. And then you get a good refreshing sleep, all right? So there are, what comes the thing, if somebody has fatigue, uh, how do you improve that? All of these kind of things and just so that I don't want you to go home with the idea that, oh yeah, he, uh, he talked about all of this thing, but how does it apply? He was, no, these are all cognitive behavior. I mean, they're doing studies in Harvard, Yale, Stanford, everywhere about cognitive behavior for insomnia. And some of these things are based on yoga. This is your first line of intervention before you start popping pills because there's a tendency for pill for the ill. You know, every time somebody got sick, they give you a pill. No, it is not medication, but meditation. Okay, all right. So I want to kind of emphasize this part that we are talking about the synergy of yoga with modern medicine. Okay, so this is yoga here is a, as a complement to modern medicine. It is used besides modern medicine. It's not alternative medicine or we are not using this in lieu of the modern medicine. No, we are using this as a complement. Okay, so that's important. And then there are yoga interventions for people uh, sleep quality for all kinds of people, you know, these are all kinds of things. Okay, so what do you do that I want to sleep? So one of the things is the 478 relaxation breathing. Okay, so here also you're going to inhale the calmness, peace, and ease, and then release the stress and tension. So very simply, you know, this is putting a hand on the belly, like the first one of the pictures I sh showed you earlier. And then you breathe through the nose, inhale for the count of two. So let's do this. I want you to sit, sit, stand, whatever you're doing, lying down. Okay, so breathe in through the nose. There's a gentle reminder here. So inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and breathe out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, breathe in. Two, three, four, hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and breathe out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, this is one of the first things that I personally do to, to sleep. So once I've done my yoga, little stretching or warming up exercises or whatever, then you need to do this relaxation breathing. Okay, this is very important. And then I do this and sometimes I combine this with the alternate not nostril breathing. So if you see this here, one way to do alternate nostril breathing is to breathe in through the left side, then you breathe out through the right side, you breathe in through the right side, you breathe out through the left side. But that is just one way for beginners to learn. But the correct way to do it and the important way to do it before sleep is, is let's do this, okay? Close your right nostril with your thumb, okay? And then breathe in through the left. Two, three, four, close both nostrils. And then open the right side and breathe out. Two, three, four, five, six. Breathe in. Two, three, four. Close both nostrils. And then open the left nostril and go two, three, four, five, six. So you continue the cycle. 
But what I want to emphasize here is two and four is you're holding your breath. So this breath holding is important because it increases your carbon dioxide, increases your nitric oxide. And we'll talk about all of this in just a minute, a little bit more detail, but this helps to relax your mind and body. So this is also like the four, seven, eight breathing. And remember that the exhalation is always more than the inhalation because exhalation is parasympathetic. You want to upregulate your parasympathetic activity to sleep. That will decrease your blood pressure, decrease your heart rate, and put you in this relaxation of body and mind, All right? So this is what it is. So very simply, you're holding your breath, okay? And then you breathe out. So this is like an inverted triangle. So you breathe in, hold your breath, and breathe out. Now, modern day science is also telling us that this breathing in and holding your breath, this part, number two, is called antra kumbhak. Okay, so kumbhak means holding your breath. Kumbhak means a pot. So you're holding something in your pot. So when you do this, then you breathe out, then you're holding your breath like a box breathing. That is the most important thing. So this is called samritti pranayam. Modern day science is talking about the importance of this. So if you cannot go for it, if you're a beginner, and you have shortness of breath, do it for only three seconds. So three seconds of breathing in, three holding, breathe out and this thing. Then gradually increase your exhalation. So that is your exhalation can be, I normally at least double the inhalation, okay? So this brings, soothes your nervous system down, relieves anxiety and stress and helps you to sleep. Okay, so I'd like you to visualize a square, all right? And then, you know, just think about the square. Just close your eyes and think of a square and then breathe in, two, three, four, then hold, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, and then breathe in, two, three, four. Now, when you hold here, that is called the exhale hold, then you're breathing in the nitric oxide. So not nitric oxide and carbon dioxide accumulate, and you're breathing in that part. Whereas here you're breathing, you're holding, and then you're breathing out that nitric oxide and carbon dioxide. And that's the reason why this exhale hold or rechak kumbak or baya kumbak is much more beneficial than antra kumbak or inhale hold, right? So this is called the mechanics of breathing. So we, we talk about so many different things and breathing. But if you understand why you're doing this, how is this thing helpful, then you can make these small tweaks in your, in your breathing thing and improve your thing. So one of the other important things that I normally do is breath hold, okay? So breath hold appears to be counterintuitive. See, whole time the purpose of breathing is to bring in oxygen and liberate carbon dioxide in a very basic way. But then, then why am I telling you to hold your breath? Because the reason is that when you hold your breath and you get the first sign of air hunger, then you breathe out. So don't want to cause any stress. But that the body compensates to maintain the proper functioning of vital organs. Your body compensates. So this is called voluntary breath hold. Now, this is completely different from involuntary breath hold, like some people with snoring uh, get. Remember, snoring is boring. That is not good. But with that, they get uh, this obstructive sleep apnea. That is OSA, obstructive sleep apnea. Or they get sleep disordered breathing, SDB, sleep disordered breathing. That is a totally different thing. I'm talking about voluntary intentional breath hold only to the extent of the first air hunger. So it's not a matter of your willpower. It is just getting to that place, just a little bit beyond your comfort zone. Only then you can improve, right? So then you do this and that will increase your vagal tone. That will increase your nitric oxide. So remember, it's a small breath in, small breath out, and you're holding your breath. When you're holding your breath, your nitric oxide is, is breathing. And that nitric oxide 
is going to calm your nervous system down. It'll help you to cope with physical, mental, stress, anxiety, all of those problems, and help you to sleep, sleep better. The whole purpose of today is to do some breathing techniques to improve your sleep, to enhance your sleep. Okay, so this is what the, we are talking about. So the key message is breathe light to breathe right. Okay, so Buteko was a Russian pulmonologist and scientist who treated hundreds and thousands of patients with asthma, rhinitis, snoring, all kinds of things. And Patrick McGavin has kind of validated some modern medical things here and talked about efficient breathing at rest improves your breathing during exercise and sleep. So remember, when, when we are talking about this relaxed breathing, it's not only to help you to sleep, but it will help you during exercise. Okay. So one of my doctor friends here, yeah, he was doing the half marathon and he just could, he was just tired after that because he was not doing nasal breathing, he was not doing the abdominal breathing. And I taught him this, some of these things in one of my yoga classes. Okay. In fact, now I, uh, for the last five years, I've been teaching people who want to become yoga teachers. So we're training the trainers. And one of the key messages we want to give there is a gentle, slow, long, easy, relaxed breath. So we, this is called a tolerable air shortage. So it is just mild. Listen. So it is just a, it's your first sign of hypoxia. You want to let go. Don't overdo it. You know, because if you if you strain yourself too much, then you have stress. You have anxiety that increases your cortisol level. So too much of air shortage is not good because then your breathing will become chaotic. And that is counterintuitive. What I want to do to show you is it's a subtle, imperceptible breath. Many times during a yoga class, I'll tell them, take a deep, good deep breath. And the guy goes like that, you know? So, okay. So let's, I mean, these are all the different things, coherent breathing and, okay. So I want to kind of wrap this up very simply, give you an idea because this is called coherent breathing. So this is like a seesaw. The sympathetic system is there. So you, that is alert state, you know, when an animal is chasing you. After that animal is gone, you want to go down and improve your, activate your parasympathetic system. This is the rest and digest. This is helpful for repair, regeneration, rejuvenation. Everything is in the rest. You see. This is called self-regulation, autonomic stability for psychological well-being, for everything, okay? And this is, of course, your parasympathetic nervous system. This is the vagus nerve. It, uh, it's the longest cranial nerve. It uh, slows your heart rate down. That's why it brings your blood pressure down and decreases your peripheral resistance, widens your blood vessels, stimulates peristalsis, all of these important things it does. And that is activated by slow, relaxed, diaphragmatic breathing, okay? So I'm kind of rubbing it in because that's important. If you want to slow your breathing down, we use this Ujjayi breathing called vagal stimulation. Of course, the, these are simple things that we have talked about it many times. Ujjayi meaning or a hissing sound, or your victory, victory over your mind. Okay? So that, and then of course we do Brahmri. So these things we do sometimes just to improve your breathing and improve your nitric oxide because when you press on your ear flaps, they have humming and that increases the vibration because there are oscillation of airflow. And that increases your nitric oxide by 15 times. There is no medicine that increases your nitric oxide this much. So this is important to do because it suits your nervous system down, okay? So I normally sleep with my Apple Watch, okay? And that tells me my sleep thing. So how much deep sleep I get, how much of rapid eye movement sleep I get, because that is when your repair and regeneration take place. So I, I also have an aura ring that I wear sometimes. So that I'm trying to see how to improve it because we're talking about all of these things and I'm teaching this for the last several years, but how does it improve my own sleep? So I do that 
And I also did you know, the home sleep study. And I wanted to see how this correlates with this. So in your rapid eye movement sleep, it decreases your muscle tone. And that's why if you're dreaming, rapid eye movement sleep is your dream state. And if you're dreaming and you want to hit somebody, you're not actually hitting anybody or not hitting your sleeping partner because the muscles, the tone is atonia. Okay. So that is why it is important, decreases your heart rate, decreases your temperature, all of these things. But in the deep sleep, there is consolidation of new memories. And that is the important thing. How do you go into theta and delta wave? That is called slow wave sleep. And I did this only because I wanted to do a polysomnogram myself to see actually how much improvement I'm getting. And that's what I did. And also this is based on all biochemistry and all. I'm not going to because it basically in the tissue, when you exercise, there's increase of carbon dioxide and that goes in the acidic way. So there is oxygen unloading in the tissue. And that's why. Okay, of course, this is based on yoga nidra. All of these things I talked to you about is based on our yoga. Rishi Muni is talking about all of this. So now let's kind of wrap up. This is the gentle reminder that you breathe through your nose. It's a belly breath. And it's mindful breathing. So it's a deliberate, slow, spacious practice. Mindful stretches. Okay? And that's why you breathe easy and stress less. So this is the breathing relaxation training to improve your sleep. Okay? And then you can focus on the breath. Okay? So same thing here. Your mind full. This is the traffic zone. And this is quiet mind. Okay, so this is, uh, this will only help you. This is my last slide. So proper breathing will give you the relaxation response and your body will heal. Okay, so this, what it does is it diverts your attention from negative thoughts. Those are the weeds that we talked about. And you want flowers to grow. So that will give you positive feelings.